hey guys welcome back for part three so this is gonna be a q a you guys are gonna see me looking down a little bit because i have all the questions written down and i'm just gonna read them off and answer you guys so let's get started all right so the first question is if i needed a letter for surgery to enter the country in the airport and the answer is no because i selected um tourism on the um on the customs form and honestly on the new customs forms that they have now i don't even think there is an option for surgery so you might want to ask your doctor about that or velasco if you're going to velasco but i don't remember seeing any option for surgery so i was confused as to what to select and when i asked them they told me to select tourism and so i didn't need a letter how many incisions did velasco give me so as i said before i had stomach back and arm lipo and bbl so for my arms i have one incision on each elbow because i only did this part of my arms i didn't do the back or like this part i just did my actual arms so there's one incision on each elbow i have one incision under each breast I have one incision in my belly button that you can't see and then I have two incisions well one incision on each side of my bikini line and I have one incision in my butt crack and then I don't have anything else um, he did use micro needles to inject fat and I guess that's why I don't have he didn't give me um, the incisions like on my butt cheeks, on the top or bottom or on the hips. You can't see them anymore because he used an actual needle, a micro needle. Um, but keep in mind that incisions are different on everybody depending on like what areas of your arm you're lipoing and um, what areas you might need more fat on your butt because the um, my friend that I was with she has incisions on the bottom of her butt and I don't so I guess it really depends on where you need your fat and where you need it removed and also I do think that he did a good job with the incisions because you can barely see them they, they were really well placed and I did forget I do have one um, in the middle of my back and let me tell you guys that incision on the middle of the back is the worst incision it takes so long to heal compared to everything else and it itches like crazy like I don't understand what it is with the skin on the back but it's definitely a lot different than the other skin because everything else has like already healed really nicely but the incision that's on the middle of my back <sighs> that one was a nightmare and like itching a lot when you have on all that foam in the faja oh my god I would just like take a brush and want to scratch it but don't scratch it guys because it makes the it makes the scar worse so next um how long didn't i sit for so i didn't sit for six weeks the only time i sat was on the plane with my boppy pillow and maybe like two or three times going to a massage when i didn't have a, a ride so and i didn't sleep on my back for six weeks also i and then after six weeks i slept on my back but i didn't sleep on my hips until four months post-op <laughs> um what did i use for my scars so once my scars healed not heals once they closed and the scabs fell off which is about like three weeks after surgery i started using silicone gel and i used biocranium silicone gel for three to four months religiously day and night and then after that um after like the fourth month i started using a prescription bleaching cream it's called hydroquinone and it's four percent and that is just to lighten up um the scar because you know on ethnic skin we tend to hyperpigment, and the bleaching cream kind of helps that 
how was the faja that Velasco provided? So he gives you a stage one and a stage two faja. The stage one I only used on the first night. I don't really like it because it has really no compression. It just feels like a spandex jumpsuit to me and I wanted to do high compression. So I didn't really use that after the first one but his stage two faja, I did like it. And I used his stage two Faha to sleep in every night. So, do you think Velasco only gives hips and no lats? No, I think he can do either one. And I think it depends on your body and your bone structure. Um, and I have seen him do both. I mean, I honestly wish I could have gotten some lats, but my body just, he couldn't do it. So I just have hips. He doesn't deliver good results to black people. <laughs> I don't know why some of you guys are saying that. I do not think that Velasco is racist at all. I do not think that is true. I think that a large portion of his clients are black. And I know a lot of girls that are black that went to him and that have great results. I am half black as well. And I think my results are nice. So I don't believe that's true at all. Um, does he suck you dry? No, and I don't think any doctor in Colombia is going to suck you dry. It's, it's not DR. Like, I think they do a good job on taking out fat. I think he did a good job on taking out as much fat as he could without burning me or giving me fibrosis. And I think that you guys should be a little bit more concerned about that. So no, he does not suck you dry. But yes, I do think that he does a good job at taking out fat. What's your BMI under 33? Yes, my BMI was under 33. I think it was like a 28. Um, I had to gain weight for this. So at surgery, I was 170 pounds at 5'5". Like for me, that is just fat. I just felt fat. And then after surgery... After surgery, like almost immediately after surgery, I was 160 pounds, like back to my normal weight, which I'm 160 pounds now too. So that's great. I basically lost everything I gained for surgery. I don't know how, cause it's like all that fat got transferred into my ass, but I don't have no fat anywhere else. And I'm still 160 pounds. I don't know. It's like, I don't know. It's like magic. <laughs> So yes, that was under 33 BMI. I think I was about 28. Um, did I have a single room in his recovery house? I did choose a single room in his recovery house only because, well not only because, one, I had to work um, and I, I wanted some peace and quiet in the day. And two, I don't know how I feel about all that blood and leaking and Everything that goes on after surgery is so personal and disgusting that I can't even imagine sharing a room with strangers. But if it was like a friend or something, then yeah, I would share a room. So I did actually meet somebody there who was really nice and we ended up becoming friends. And so if I would have known her before and we would have went together, I would have definitely shared a room with her because we went through a lot there and we did everything together. But other than that, no, I would not want to share a room with strangers and I did choose a single room. How many meals a day do they provide? They provide three meals a day. Um, for breakfast, they give you a choice of like pancakes, eggs, or waffles, cereal, yogurt, fruit, stuff like that. Um, and then the dinner and lunch is different every day. So it's three meals a day. Did I order Rappi? Yes, I did order Rappi. I ordered Uber Eats when it works. Sometimes it doesn't work there. It's really strange. And also we ordered Domino's. Um, and let me tell you guys, if you're going to be ordering Rappi or Uber Eats or if you go to any restaurant for that matter. But let me just stick to Uber Eats and Rappi. They always 
get the order wrong like just expect your order to be wrong you know like if you're a picky person that doesn't like certain things on your food try to order something that you don't have to like remove ingredients from because they're always getting the order wrong and then a lot of stuff is always sold out on their website it's it's so weird but we did eat out a lot there um either ordering or um like going to restaurants ordering a whole bunch of food being ignorant at the same time because we didn't we weren't really enjoying the food in colombia so we would just order a lot of stuff at once to hopefully enjoy at least one of the meals that we would buy but i am going to tell you guys the domino's is actually really good in colombia i don't like domino's in the u.s i think it's disgusting but give it a try when you're in colombia they're going to tell you don't eat that what are you doing like you just had surgery you're not allowed to eat this shitty food but just try it at least once you know you're not gonna die um do they speak english so Velasco speaks English, his assistant speaks English, Diego the driver speaks English, and I think maybe one of the nurses speak English. So there are a lot of people there that speak English. The nurses not so much, so you might need like a translator. And how far was the clinic from the recovery house? So the clinic was about 20 minutes maybe 30 if there's traffic it wasn't too far so that's about it guys thank you for watching bye